Yeah, overall, I think it's good. I mean, there's some things that I, you know, they, um, people still complain about, but I think overall it's pretty good. What do I do with my, here it is. Well, just two of you tonight, but that's okay. We'll have fun. Well, that's why I set up that thing on Facebook. I was trying yeah, well, it's summer, so, yeah. you know, it is what it is. But I'll go ahead and record it for everybody. Um, okay, so since there's two of you, <laughs> for next month, did you guys want to do any type of presentation maybe or, or maybe look, think about something that you'd like to talk about and maybe present it or whatever? Okay. We can really promo it. Oh, pizza. A 13 something? Yep. Okay, just give me back a five, it's fine. Okay. I'm a little disappointed that. Yeah, okay. All right. Thanks, Thanks huh? There you go. Yeah. It's over at Trail Velocity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's the Northern Illinois Coders. Yeah, yeah, I know some guys that go there. One of the guys did connect to our group, John. John he did. Yep, he did. And he's going to try to. He said even them over the summer, they have kind of hit and miss. Yeah. So I said, you know. They're doing that Google one. Yeah. Google language. I, yeah, I, I don't see that. that too, yeah. Let me go get plates for yeah. you. Doing good, working. Just got back from a family reunion. Went well, so yeah, in Missouri. So it was good. Putting together a iOS textbook over the summer, doing that and working during the day programming, but going well. How about you? Yeah, we have a million projects going on right now. Yeah. And you know, when I first started over at Regal, I was just starting off on that coding program that you Right. Right. Us, help us redo some of because we have a front end, a company doing the front end out of New Jersey, SPM right. Solutions or SPM Marketing or whatever. Anyways, they made the style of what the front end looks like, and we had we're asking that we're going to have the subdomain hosted at our site. They're mm -hmm. going to host the main. Okay, so you can control what you want so on the on your end. Brandon had to uh, basically do all the CSS to get everything okay. looking. Cool. Same style as what their end is. So right. I've got to do all the back end functionality stuff to make sure all the ordering and all that stuff works. Right. Well, cool. So we're working on the website. That's supposed to go live next Monday, but now we're thinking it's probably going to get postponed until 1st of July. Right. Yeah, you don't want to rush it. Right. Because I'd rather wait another week mm -hmm. and be able to make sure all the bugs are found right. and have it launched and have it be. Right. Right. And then I'm still working on that. I call it a quote program, but it's really, I've got the quote module done. Now I'm right. going to get the ordering module in it too. So basically once a customer service salesperson takes in a, a quote and then punches it into my program, emails it back as a PDF mm -hmm. um, with the quoted prices, once the distributor or customer says, yeah, I want to order that, then I want to be able to have where they can just quote that quote, hit place order, and it turns that quote into an order. Right. And it's all just boom. Right, automated. Yeah. And then we're putting in a whole new network. We're running fiber. Wow, you we're, guys are busy. <laughs> we, we, just, we just virtualized our server. Yeah. We have two virtual servers now. And then uh, all new cabling, new switches. Because we, we're actually on uh, megabyte switches right now. We're oh, okay. Megabyte switches. Right, right. So all the whole new trunk of, of fiber with the from switch to switch. Right. And off of that we're our building runs on cat five right now, we're sure. on cat six mm -hmm. off of those switches. Mm -hmm. And then uh, 
we have to basically have our parent company from Korea take our ERP system that they made, a proprietary system, and port it over to the new server. Right, right. Well, it sounds like you're busy. So, yeah, we're definitely. Yeah. But that's, well, that's a good thing, though. It's a good problem. Yeah. So, do you guys think about what you want to do on next month or? If you want to think about it, maybe, and then uh, just post on Facebook or whatever. And I'll, what I might do, since there's only two of you, I might just say, I'll post on Facebook and see who all wants to do whatever and see if we get more people coming yeah, for July. I know June, everybody's like sick of school and don't want I don't to come back. <laughs> like yeah, he, he dropped out. He said he didn't want to meet over the summer, the gentleman who was going to present. Uh, no, I, Jack. Jack. No. Jack was going to present this month. Oh, well, I thought we were going to do something where you wanted us to showcase. I did. I was going to have you guys do your apps, but I think Iowa 7 is probably more important, actually. Yeah. Well, really? Because I mean, you guys have already seen everything. Already seen yeah, you've already it's seen it, so. Presenter app. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to yourself. Yeah. Uh, well, Sphero the Robot, talked about that. Iowa 7, we'll look at in a second. The other one that's within Sphero, I do want to mention, is. Um, well, here's a, the insides. It started out as a Kickstarter app uh, a project about 2010, I think. And they got about 40, 35, 40 million dollars raised. Jumped off once they got to this level here, which basically has an accelerometer. Uh, it's got two wheels down here. And this is the accelerometer part. Anytime you move the ball around, hey, come on in, buddy. The high end stays. Uh, go and get some pizza. It stays static with the ball to where um, regardless how you move it, this piece is always going to be up, basically. Um, so anyway, that's the Sphero. Um, you guys can play with it after the video. Augmented Reality, which I think in July, June, they just came out with a um, Rolling Dead, I believe the app name, where you basically kill little, uh, what do they call them? Uh, thank you. Zombies with the ball. And you see the ball in the room, and the zombies just come out from everywhere, and you just kill them, which is pretty cool. So I think, and they just released the SDK for this, this like this month to all the developers. And so I think we'll start seeing some cool apps with it for gaming. The other one I'm going to actually get in August probably uh, is Romo. Romo is an another robot that you can program, and you, this one you actually have to dock though an iPhone 4s or 4 into the robot. And it's got wheels on it, or it's got like a com two conveyor belt wheels. And this one's controlled via Wi-Fi. The Sphero's controlled via Bluetooth. And so the, the Romo's a little different. It, it uses a processor of the iPhone. So you have the camera. You can be in another state and control it, uh, another country and control it. And so that one has, it's just different uses from Sphero. Sphero, I think, is going to be really helpful for gaming. Uh, Romo is going to be more helpful for uh, using the uh, camera video because they got some cool apps already. One that you can actually just program uh, a whole bunch of if statements into it. If somebody comes up to the camera, it'll back up. If somebody yells, it'll frown. If somebody, you have a party and it's on a table, as it sees faces, it takes pictures of those faces and then post them on a, a a Facebook account or wherever you want to post it. So different uses, really not gaming, I don't think, more social type stuff. So I'll, I'll have that actually by fall. And I'm going to keep both of them here probably. You guys can play with them anytime. Cool uses for robots. Well, robot uses, cool. I mean, it's, it's cool. I think every boy anyway, you know, guy, not no, girls probably too, but most guys always love robots growing up. And so I think it's just kind of like, you know, a dream of a programmer to be able to program something like a robot. Uh, they, all, both of them have uh, programming skills that you can learn for beginning programmers, which I like too. Um, like the Romo has a whole bunch of if statements. You can just, in a text file, you can just, if you know the command, you can just type in line by line all these if statements and then just plug it into the Romo and it'll, it'll work. And then you can share that code with others. SDK comes with both. The Sphero right now is 100. Romo is 149. Romo just came out, so I'm guessing in a year's time that'll drop to 100, probably. Okay, now let's go to the video. And I'm gonna, Brandon, I told him I'm just gonna email everybody. I'll have you post on Facebook 
for next month what people want to present, what somebody wants to present. And we'll try to maybe have everybody and have you guys help me maybe get, you know, if we it's summertime in July, if we can get, I don't know, I'd like to have at least eight to ten people would be great. Uh, you probably not get more than that, but that'd be perfect if we get that. Uh, so I'll have you guys help me with that. Okay, here's a 30 minute. It's unbelievable. It's just gorgeous. From the typography on this lock screen to the vitality of the background and the animation to the home screen with these icons. It looks so great. They just look fantastic. And, you know, a lot of us have our own wallpaper. You know, we like pictures of our family there. And now that liveliness actually carries through to the home screen because as you move the device in your hand, it actually tracks your motion and has parallax that exp you can see behind the icons. It's really incredible. And it carries over across the system, this liveliness. I mean, just take a look at something like weather where the motion conveys this information and where the edge-to-edge -edge design just takes advantage of every pixel on that retina display. It's so nice. It's great for apps you use every day, like messages, <laughs> your calendar, your email is gorgeous. Your friends never looked more attractive. <laughs> And Game Center, we just completely ran out of green felt. <laughs> and wood as well, this has got to be good for the environment. <laughs> the clocks look great. And even apps like Stocks and Compass, I mean, they just have this look of precision, this sense of purpose. The best way to appreciate iOS 7 is to see it live. I'd like to give you a demo right now. So let's take our first live look at iOS 7. Here it is. You can see how the device actually responds to the motion in my hand. Just slide out the lock screen. You see how it slides in. I want you all to look away for a moment while I type in my <laughs> Okay, you can look again. Okay, don't tell anyone about that. All right. So here we, here we are on the gorgeous new home screen. Let's go into weather. You see on weather, it's a little cloudy today. I can actually tap here. The degrees get more information like humidity and rain. Let's swipe through some locations. Clear in Sydney, kind of hot in Phoenix. Here in uh, Big Thunder Mountain, it's looking a little, little rough. We've got some, uh, some thunder brewing. Oh yeah. <laughs> Some heavy snow here in the North Pole. And uh, <laughs> tropical storm here in Gilligan's Island. I hope they, they got off that island. <laughs> so, and it's more functional than ever. If you pinch, you get this gorgeous overview of all your cities. <laughs> Even with the time, so it's a world clock as well. Let's take a look at the calendar. So clean. Swipe from days to day like this. Turn it into landscape. See your whole week at a glance. Got a big week ahead. Zoom out. Scroll easily through your months. And even go all the way out to the year. Let's take a look at messages. Notice as we scroll, we have this great sort of playful motion. The bubbles. Let's bring up the keyboard. As you slide contents of the keyboard, you see the layering and transparency. Gives you that sense of context. There's this gesture now from the left edge of the device. It's great for using the device with one hand. If I want to just go back, I can just swipe from the edge of the display, pull back like that, move in and out. So clean and natural. Let's take a look at folders. I'm going to go here into my games folder. I can now have multiple pages. Store hundreds of items in my folders. It's awesome. Take a look at uh, Game Center. So, some of those good looking friends. Let's take a look at mail. 
mean, the type is just so clean. When you drill into a message, look at how you get these full screen, edge to edge photos. It's really great. And that gesture for moving in and out works here too, of course. It's just move between messages, just like this. It's so great. And if you just slide across on any item, you can get at the trash and more options as well right here in mail. Finally, let's take a look at Notification Center. Same as always, we can just swipe down from the top of the device, it comes down with a nice thud. You can see all notifications, just my missed ones. And we have this great new today view. So you can see your friends' birthdays, current look at the weather, your upcoming uh, in, uh, invitations, your calendar, your stocks, and even a quick look at tomorrow. You know what's really great is for the first time ever, Notification Center is now available from the lock screen as well. You don't even have to unlock your device. So that's a quick look at iOS 7. It's a comprehensive end-to-end -end redesign of the user experience. Installing iOS 7 on your phone is like getting an entirely new phone, but one you already know how to use, one that's so much more beautiful and functional than ever before. But iOS 7 is actually more than that. It's also a major feature release as well. I have 10 features I want to talk to you about today, starting with Control Center. Control Center is something that's so simple and yet so essential. You have those switches that you just want to get to really quickly from wherever you are. Well, now with Control Center, swipe up from the bottom of the device, and there they are. Turn on airplane mode, adjust your brightness, play a song, even get a flashlight. And available from anywhere, including your lock screen. So if you wake up in the middle of the night and you need to find something, your flashlight's right there. And that's Control Center. Next, let's talk about multitasking. Now, iOS 7 has always been built on the industrial strength foundations of OS 10. It's had intrinsic, powerful multitasking capabilities, but we had to be careful about how we've exposed these to applications because we want to preserve great battery life. Now in iOS 4, we did add support for select kinds of applications to do multitasking, things like playing music in the background or receiving a voice over IP call while your app was in the background. Well now, in iOS 7, I'm pleased to announce that we're gonna have multitasking for all apps with great battery life. So how does it work? Well, imagine you have an app that you're using constantly throughout the day, a social networking app or something, and you're checking in all the time. Well, iOS 7 has noticed that pattern of use and is gonna provide that app with frequent background activity to stay up to date. And let's see if another app you use, maybe that you just check in on in the morning at breakfast, maybe at night after work. Well, iOS 7 notices that too, and it's going to give that app background cycles just in time so it's up to date for when you need it. Now, in addition to this intelligent scheduling, iOS 7 does opportunistic updates. The average user wakes their device dozens of times a day, and those provide great opportunities when the system's already powered up to update apps in the background. It also adapts intelligently to network conditions. So if it's in, you have good coverage, it's a great time to fetch. And it coalesces updates across multiple applications. So once you have those radios powered up, lets multiple applications take advantage of it for their background updates. And finally, iOS 7 responds to push notifications as a trigger to give that application time in the background. So when you follow that notification, the app will already be up to date. Now, iOS 7 also has a great new user interface for moving between all the things you have going on on your phone. Now, you can double click and move into Notification Center and just swipe between your running applications, tap, and move right in. And that is multitasking in iOS 7. <laughs> Next, let's talk about Safari. Safari is the most popular mobile browser in the world. And in iOS 7, we're making it even better. Has a great new full screen, 
look so you can really focus on your content. If you pull down or tap at the top, you can now get a smart search field. From that search field, you can get it one tap access to all of your favorites, as well as do search and access URLs. And it's a great new interface for your tabs. In addition to all of this, it has parental controls and integration with the same iCloud keychain you saw earlier with Mavericks. I'd like to give you a demo of Safari now. Let's take a look. Okay. Let's head on in to Safari. So here we are in Safari. I'm gonna just zoom in on this page. I want you to watch as I scroll how all the controls just recede and now you have that full screen for your content. We've really improved the way you navigate now in Safari. I'm just gonna tap in here to a link to a detailed story. We can even zoom in, of course, on this page. And that same gesture you saw earlier for going back, well, of course, that works in Safari as well. So I just swipe in from the edge of the display and I can navigate back and forth through my browser history, just like that. It's such a fantastic way to browse. Next, let's look at that unified search field. I'm just gonna tap up here at the top. You see how I have one tap access to all my favorites. It's really convenient, but I'm gonna type in this case. So I'll type D-I-S. And you notice I have a top URL hit, as well as Google search suggestions as well, available all right here. We've really improved bookmarking as well. I'll use this bookmark control down at the bottom. I see my bookmark folders, all my bookmarks. We also have shared links. You can see stories posted by people you follow on Twitter and my reading list. And now just like you saw in Mavericks, on iOS you can scroll continuously from article to article without coming back to the list. It's really awesome. Next, let's take a look at uh, tabs. I'm gonna click here at the bottom, into tabs. Unbelievable. And you're no longer limited to just eight. And down at the bottom are also all your iCloud tabs. You can see what you left open on your other devices as well. And tabs, they're really nice to use. You can just tap, just sweep into a tab, back out, back in, back out. It's just fantastic. If you want to reorder your tabs, just tap and hold. Just rearrange them like this. And if you're done with a tab, just swipe it off to the side and it goes away. And that's the new Safari. Let's take a look now at Control Center. So I'm just gonna swipe up from the bottom of my display and up comes Control Center. See, I have these great switches at the top. I can turn on and off, do not disturb, for instance. Access my brightness. I can even access a flashlight, really useful at night. Play a song. And of course, this is available to me everywhere. So if I'm in Safari, for instance, let's bring it up here. You can turn off that music. And you notice how it's layering and transparency. Take the personality of the environment where you bring it up. That's Control Center. Next up, multitasking. It's just a great way to get across all the things you're doing on your device. So if I just double click here on my home button, jump into multitasking, I can just swipe across everything I have running. I wanna move into one, messages, double tap, back out, move into mail, back out, just like this. It's really, really nice. That's multitasking in iOS 7. Thank you. So of course, there's, there's much, much more to iOS 7, including AirDrop. <laughs> AirDrop is absolutely the easiest way to share with the people that are right around you. So now, when you're in any app that supports a share sheet, you bring up the share sheet, and your friends that are all around you just show up right there. You tap on one, and they're going to get a uh, panel right on their display and they can accept what it is that you shared. They accept it, they're taken right into the app. 
And you know if you want to share with multiple people, you just tap, tap, tap. No need to wander around the room bumping your phone <laughs> with others. Now this is system-wide for any app that supports the share sheet. And of course, it uses peer-to-peer Wi-Fi for maximum speed and all your transmissions are securely encrypted. Because it uses the latest Wi-Fi hardware, it's supported on the iPhone 5, the fourth generation iPad, iPad mini, and the fifth generation iPod Touch. And that is AirDrop. Next, let's talk about the camera. So now, your camera in iOS 7 is four cameras in one. You can just swipe from your video camera to your photo camera, to your square cropped camera, to your pano camera. And when you're taking stills, you now have access to live photo filters from some gorgeous black and whites to some classic color filters as well. So with your great new camera, we want to give you a great new way to manage your photos, and it's the new Photos app. You know, for many users, this is what their photo organization looks like. An endless, unorganized stream of their camera roll. We've all been there. But you know, it doesn't have to be this way. <laughs> There's great information in those photos. iOS knows where you took the photos and when you took them. And that provides inherent structure that we can use to organize those photos. And now, in photos in iOS 7, we do. We organize them into moments. And I'd like to give you a demo of that right now. So let's take a look now at the Photos app. So here you see some photos that were taken in San Francisco. And you see nothing was done to organize these photos explicitly. And yet they have these labels like the Palace of Fine Arts, Baker Beach, Lombard Street. It provides this natural organization for appreciating the photos. We can go up to more trips at more time in San Francisco, Golden Gate, San Francisco Fisherman's Wharf. But then you see we have home. We have photos taken at home and photos taken at the elementary school and around that area. And now if you want to zoom back out to get a, a more of a bird's eye view of your collection, we draw these moments intelligently together into collections. So see here how that multiple day trip around San Francisco is collected, sorry about that, I got a little excited there, into, <laughs> it's a very exciting interface, into a multi-day trip in San Francisco. And that time at home and around the school, well that's one moment uh, that's one collection as well. It's a really great way to browse your photos. You can even go all the way out to the year level. Look across your whole photo collection. <laughs> and look at how we pull out the interesting places that you went in that year. Like 2011 was Colorado and Hawaii, 2012 went to South America. You may not remember when you did it, but iOS does. And it's right there. And you know, with this retina display, you can even kind of make out patterns of photos and when different occasions are. And of course, we found like we had the urge that we wanted to just tap in right from here. And so now, in fact, you can. You can just tap and scrub and find the photo you're looking for just like that. It's really just amazing. So I can just pick a photo here, whichever one I want. It's kind of cute. And now we can edit it because we have photo filters. So I can go into the filters here. I can try different color effects. And if I find one I like, maybe a nice black and white, I can do it just like that. I'll apply it, save that photo away. We also have great new ways to share your photos in the Photos app. So let's bring up sharing. We have uh, AirDrop right here. If any of you were running iOS 7, I'd see you. It looks like it didn't leak, so that's good. You're not in there right now, but you have AirDrop. You have access to other photos. You can share them from right here, which is really handy. Great photo sharing option is iCloud photo sharing. I'm going to tap on that now. Let's go into iCloud photo sharing. And from here, I can select the photo streams that I want to share to. So I'm on family photos now, but I'm going to drill in, and I can see other photo streams I've set up. And now other people can share into my photo stream as well. So these are shared photo streams. I'll just select a, a photo stream here and uh, type a little message. We'll post that photo. So we've made it really easy to share, and we've also made it a really great experience 
to experience the photos you and others have shared with this new shared tab at the bottom. So I'm going to go in here, you can see my photo with a comment, I can see the comments of other people and the photos that they've shared, and now we even support sharing video via <laughs> iCloud photo sharing. And we have a great way to just browse those shared photos. I just tilt the device into landscape. I can scroll through it like this and just look at how beautiful that is. What a great way to experience your photos. So that's the new Photos app in iOS 7. So integration with internet services is a huge part of the experience of iOS and never more so than in iOS 7. So to take you through some of those features, I'd like to bring up Eddie Q. Eddie? Great job, Craig. Thank you. Thanks. It's great to be here. So let's talk about Siri. The first thing is Siri has a gorgeous new interface. Now as I speak, you'll see a sound wave across the bottom. And you get the results in a beautiful, gorgeous, clean way. But Siri has always been a lot about your, the voice of Siri. And we've got an all new voice. Hi, Eddie. What can I do for you? And you can also choose a male voice. Hi, Eddie. What can I do for you? And we've got high quality, thank you. <laughs> we've also got high quality female and, and, and male voices for French. En quoi puis-je vous être utile, Eddie? as well as German. Was kann ich für dich tun, Eddie? And we're going to be adding other languages over time. Now, Siri is also getting a lot smarter. It knows how to control more of your device. So you could say, play my last voicemail, or turn on Bluetooth, or increase my brightness. <laughs> and it can answer a lot more questions, because we've integrated some new services like Twitter, so you can see what people are saying or what's happening. We've integrated the world's largest encyclopedia in Wikipedia, and we've even integrated web search results from Bing right inside of Siri. And it's great for photos, too. And that's some of the new features of Siri in iOS 7. Now, Siri is also a big part of our next feature iOS in the car. Now, 95% of the cars being sold today have integrated music playback and control from an iOS device. But we want to take this integration to a whole nother level. What if you could get iOS on the screen that is built into your car so that you could make phone calls, play music, go to maps, get your iMessages right on the screen in your car, or eyes free using Siri. So now, when you make a phone call, it's going to look something like this. Call John Appleseed. Or play Get Lucky. Or go to Maps. Get Directions. Or even get your iMessages read to you, and you can dictate a response all eyes free. Now, all of these car manufacturers are introducing iOS integration in 2014, and I know which one I want to buy. <laughs> and that's iOS in the car. Next, the App Store. Now, the App Store looks beautiful. It's way easier to find apps than ever before. We've added a new feature where you can look for apps based on your age range, kids categories. Parents are going to love this. And apps near me. You can find the most popular apps based on your current location. So now, let's say I'm at AT&T Park in San Francisco, and here are the apps I would see. Or I'm at the Louvre in Paris or I'm in Union Square shopping. It's that easy to discover new apps. It's really great. Now the next feature I know you're all going to love because every day you see something like this. Well, no more because the App Store updates your apps automatically.
Next, let's talk about music. The music app in iOS 7 is beyond a doubt the best music player we have ever done. The first thing you'll notice is we provide you with beautiful artist images right in your library. And you just tap an artist and you see the songs, but it's not just the songs on your device. You see all of your purchased music from iCloud right in your library. And if you want to hear one of the songs, you just tap and you get our beautiful now playing screen. But it's not just your purchased music. In the video apps, you get all of your movies and TV shows right from iCloud, right in your library. It's really, really great. Now, if you turn the device sideways, you see your albums. You can just swipe to see more, and once you see one you like, you tap and it zooms right in. Now, the music app is the best way to listen to your music. But today, we're introducing an amazing way to discover new music, and we call it iTunes Radio. And here's what it looks like. It's built right into the music app, but rather than tell you about it, I'd love to show it to you. And we'll launch the music app. And the first thing you'll notice is we've got a set of featured stations that our programming team have created. So you can see the songs that are trending on Twitter right now, or even the songs that you guys are all going to hear this week at WWDC. But I feel like summer songs. So you just tap. And once you have a station you love, you can just tap the eye and you could share it with a friend or even create a new station based on this artist or song. I can easily skip to the, see what's the next song. I'll go back to stations, but it's not just the featured stations that we provide. You can create your own stations. Here are some that I previously created. But I feel like doing something new. Now, our music team is providing you with hundreds of stations based on alternative, country, classic rock, but I feel like doing something a little more specific. How about some Led Zeppelin? with a great Led Zeppelin song. Um, let's go ahead and see what else is on this station. And a great thing is I can always modify the station. I can just tap the star and I can say play more songs like this or never play this song or add it to my wish list. Now I like this so let's play some more songs like this. Now another great feature of iTunes Radio is it keeps track of all of the songs that you're listening to across all the stations all your devices and you can get to them by just tapping history. You can see them all here, you can preview and buy right from there. And that's iTunes Radio. So iTunes Radio is built into iOS 7. It works on your iPhone, your iPod Touch, and your iPad. It's also built into iTunes on your Mac and PC and even in your living room built into Apple TV. <laughs> iTunes Radio is free with ads, and if you're an iTunes Match subscriber, it's completely ad-free. <laughs> We're starting in the US, and we'll be adding other countries over time, and that's the new music app on iOS 7, it is the best music player we have ever done. Thank you.
Thank you, Eddie. So 10 amazing features in iOS 7 and a comprehensive end-to-end -end UI redesign. And of course, we're bringing it all to iPad as well. Now, there's more to iOS 7 than we had time to talk to you about in depth here today. Things like FaceTime audio, where you now can do audio only, high quality audio calls over Wi-Fi on any <laughs> iOS device. <laughs> Notification sync, so if you dismiss a notification on one device, you don't have to deal with it over and over again on your other devices. <laughs> Great feature for our users in China with integration of the popular microblogging website site, Tencent Weibo. And for those of you who have people who just won't let go, phone, FaceTime, and message blocking. <laughs> also, for our enterprise fee, uh, customers, per app VPN. Now, there's, yeah, there's a couple enterprise people in the audience, all right. So, in addition to all this, there's one feature I want to talk about in a little bit more detail, which is activation lock. So, hundreds of millions of us use Find My iPhone to find our phone when it's just lost in the couch or maybe left at Starbucks, but also when it's been stolen. And now, with activation lock, if a thief tries to turn off Find My iPhone, or if they even wipe the device entirely, they will not be able to reactivate it because they don't know your iCloud username and password. We think this is gonna be a really powerful theft deterrent. Now, of course, in addition to being a great release for our users, iOS 7 is also a fantastic and major release for our developers as well. The SDK includes over 1,500 new APIs, can add AirDrop, integrate with third-party game controllers, new APIs for taking advantage of multitasking, iBeacons for Bluetooth LE micro-location, Sprite Kit for super fast, power-efficient game animations, and UI dy dynamics to bring physics to your UI view animations. So I, yeah. So iOS 7 is available to you developers in beta on the iPhone today. We'll have betas for iPad coming up in the, near, in the coming weeks, and for everyone else, a final release coming this fall. So I, iOS 7 will be available for iPhone 4 and later, iPad 2 and later, the iPad mini, and the fifth generation iPod Touch. That is iOS 7. I hope you love it. Thank you.